She's his girlfriend. He calls you despicable names. The mother of his child. Did you spit on her? I have, yes. With another on the way. He was trying to get me home by dragging me. This is more than jealous love. Matt thinks I'm sleeping with half the town. Is it dangerous love? That's one of my fears is that she has someone around my son. The one I'm concerned being around the children is you. You know the show we were talking about last night? Yes. Um, I got some of the text messages. What are they? Well, I, I can't. I, I can't. Well, I can't even. Tell me. I can't even show these. Tell me. Can you tell me? No, well. They're that bad. Well, I can. No. <sighs> well, no, you can't show those. No, no, can't. He texts that to his girlfriend. Are you kidding me? Mm. That's terrible. That's abuse. That is abusive. Do, do you think she knows that? Do you think she knows that's abusive? Mm. Well, I guarantee you she doesn't. Uh, does she answer him when he sends those to her? Yeah. <gasps> that's horrible. Mm. Oh my God. Well, let's get started. I'll meet you out there. Okay. Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Bill. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Your first love is supposed to be something that you remember fondly, something memories are made from, right? Well, sadly, my guest Eileen's memories are made up of this, and this, and this. I hope you never get over this and feel the way I do when I'm reminded every day that my kid's mom is a whore. Don't have our son around anyone you nasty slut. Well, Robin heard even worse before the show. In fact, Eileen says her boyfriend Matt is so convinced she's cheating that he calls the mother of his child the most degrading names in the book. My boyfriend Matt and I have been dating for almost two years. In the beginning, he was every girl's dream guy. It felt like something out of a movie. About five months into our relationship, Matt started accusing me of cheating on him. I did not see it coming at all. Now, our relationship is horrible. There's no trust in it at all. Matt thinks I'm sleeping with my ex-boyfriend, his friend, and half the town. I think that Matt is crazy and delusional. He has absolutely no proof that I have cheated on him. Matt has called me a slut, a whore, a pig, whenever Matt says something. I'm just so used to it. <sighs> During my first pregnancy, we got in a really bad argument and he made me sleep on the floor. The first time he spit in my face, I kind of just stood there. He did it and he didn't even flinch. He would make fun of my body after I had his child. He just said that I'm beat up down there. He would say stuff about my stretch marks. I act like it doesn't bother me. Whenever I show him emotion, he thinks it's fake. The most hurtful thing that Matt does is he turns to my son and he will say, I know your mommy's a whore. He'll say that he's sorry for choosing someone like me to be his mother. Okay, are you cheating on your boyfriend? No, you, I have you, not cheated on him. Okay, and so he's fabricating this in his mind. He's just making this up. Yes. Okay, and it started because why? Is there anything you can look at that triggered this? He thinks that because 
I was friends with my ex-boyfriend. I was being sneaky and going around behind his back right. and hiding stuff from him. Okay, and from that, he has called you the most horrible and despicable names. Slut and pig and racial slurs and... Uh, everything you I mean some of these I can't even say on the air they're they're so bad and despicable he says those things to you regularly right yes and what do you do when he does that um I don't know I I kind of just learned to I, I got used to it whenever he does say it I don't do anything I kind of just brush it off he says you're worn out and sloppy yeah how old are you 20 20 He's, he makes fun of your body. Yeah. He says your body's disgusting. Yes. Okay. Well, Matt does not back down from his opinion. He is adamant that she is sleeping with another man. Take a look at this. I'm almost 100% sure that Elena cheated on me with two different people, one being her ex-boyfriend and one being one of my friends. I never caught her in the egg. And she says, until you catch me with somebody, I'm innocent. I don't believe that. When I accuse Eileen of cheating, she cries and screams and it's almost like she's trying to hide something. It makes me sick to think that my son could be in the same house as someone she's cheating on me with. Eileen is seven and a half months pregnant and the doctor told her that she got pregnant in the month of July and we were together all of August or July. I'm 100% sure that this is not my child. I've called Eileen names, I've called her nasty, disgusting, whore. If Eileen is seven months pregnant, sleeping with somebody else, then she deserves to be called a whore. She's getting the emotional support from me and the intimate part from somebody else. I believe this has been going on during the entire pregnancy. In the last year, we've broken up five or six times. Any time that I give Eileen a chance to work it out with me, it only lasts for three to four days. I can't get past the fact that she may have cheated on me and that she's hiding it from me. Until Eileen tells me she's cheated on me, there's no way of us ever getting back together. You, you gotta tell him this stuff though. Okay, what is it you're saying to her now? You're telling her that she, you admitted to, she admitted to you in the car that she cheated on you, right? Yeah, like I, I've learned that I have to, like, I started noticing signs in our relationship, like not, things that didn't bother the way they used to. Um, and nothing was a big deal. Like she, it's like she didn't care as much. And she started making some little messages towards like her ex-boyfriend. She was trying to be friends with the people that he'd hang out with. She kept trying to find things out about him. In order to get the truth about anything, I had to question her and question her and question her. Well, let's go back to that. Because you said she admitted to you in the car yeah. that, yes, that, she that, had cheated a, on you. Yeah, I, so let's talk about that because you said she did admit this and you, and you asked her when we came out here why she didn't tell me that because I asked her if she had cheated on you yeah, and she says makes, absolutely not. Makes me sound like an idiot. Let's fast forward to the car. I, so she admitted to you in the car that she cheated she on said, you. And that's true, right? You admitted this to yeah, him in the this car, is, right? This is the first time. Hold on. This is the first time that he ever accused me. It was uh -huh. 2013 in November. Um, we were in the car. Literally, we were talking for five hours, and he was like, Eileen, just tell me you cheated on me. If you don't tell me, I'm going to walk away. You're, you're going to have to raise this baby alone. He literally said that the only way we can talk and get over things is if I told him. So after being questioned for five hours, I told him, yes, I cheated on you. Was that the truth? No, it was not the truth. Why would you tell him that? Because he said he was going to leave, and I was pregnant, and he said that's the only way we could even continue to talk is if I told him that. Uh huh. So you told him what he wanted to hear. Yes. Okay. And then what happened? After that, he looked at me and he was like, how could you? And I was like, I, I don't know what to do. So he grabbed my phone, he walked out and he smashed my phone. And I was like, Matt, I didn't cheat on you. Why do you want to hear that I cheated on you when I didn't? Literally, I said, he, we can't, he would, I said we can't get help unless you tell the truth. I was like, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to think it's disgusting. Like, I said, you, please tell because me. Because every said. time I Did you wind up I, sleeping on the floor? Yes. He made me sleep on the ground that night. She had the option to leave this. She had her keys in her car. She wanted to stay. She Why did you leave. sleep on the floor? I didn't want to sleep in bed with her after I thought she cheated on me. Couldn't okay, let's take on. a break. Eileen says Matt will do anything to hurt her, going so far as to send her audio of himself having sex with another woman. We'll talk about that after the break.
One time, Matt sent me an audio recording of him having sex with another girl. I was just kind of like, what is this? And Matt responded to it. She's given me everything I never got. Right when you're the one that... One time, Matthew and I were on the way to the park. Matt and I stopped at someone's porch and started having sex. I had a whole bottle of vodka. She lost her clothes and passed out. He was trying to get me home by picking me up and dragging me. I kept dropping her on the way. I was covered in bruises and scrapes. Someone called the police. When the police showed up, it looked like me and this other person were kidnapping her. They arrested me on the spot. I was taken to the hospital. I was convicted of a simple assault. He says that if he wasn't with me that night, that he would have never found himself in that situation. Well, Eileen has a one-year-old child and another on the way with her boyfriend of nearly two years, Matt. Now, Eileen says that Matt is so controlling, jealous, and spiteful that he has accused her of sleeping with his friend, accused her of having another man's bodily fluids on her pants, and sent her an audio of him having sex with another woman. Matt, he doesn't just think that I cheat on him. He thinks he knows when I did it, who I did it with, how I look doing it. He thinks that I cheated on him, so he wants to get back at me. One time, Matt sent me an audio recording of him having sex with another girl. I played it and I was kind of in shock. I was just kind of like, what is this? And Matt responded to it. She's given me everything I never got. I couldn't help but replay it over and over again just to see if that was real. I will never get that out of my head. <sighs> Cheating's one thing, but to send someone a video and to hurt them, I don't know if you can fix that. Um, did that hurt to hear that? Yeah. What did you think when you listened to it? So he did it to hurt me. He, like, wanted to hurt me. Mm -hmm. And that's what hurts more. Did it have the desired effect? I mean, you wanted to hurt her and it did, right? <laughs> if you believe all of this, if you believe that she's involved with her ex-boyfriend, if you believe that she's having another man's baby, why are you still here? I'm just addicted to fighting. It's like... Why aren't you gone? I have an addictive personality. Like, with my OCD and stuff, I just kind of became addicted to the fighting and the, the how I get when we fight, controlling, and it's not even about her anymore. It's just about that. Did you spit on her? I have, yes. Did, did you ask her to take a polygraph to prove that she hadn't cheated? Yeah. Did she? She did. And you drove to another town to take it? In Pittsburgh, yeah. Yeah, and you paid like a fee and, and she took the polygraph? And what were the results? She wasn't lying. She, she passed. Okay, but then didn't you accuse her of, of having sex with the operator to give her a passing grade? No, no, no. You, I didn't you, say you had sex with him. You said, Come on. You said that I never said you had either, sex with him. You said I either convinced him or I think she I made him feel bad. She wasn't going to leave. She wasn't going to leave. You wasn't going to leave in Pittsburgh because I, 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 I drove down. So you drive to Pittsburgh, get a polygraph operator, take a polygraph exam. She passes, and then you say. Well, that doesn't count because you did something to convince him to falsify the record and give you a, a pass on it. I mean, there's, there's more to it, but ultimately, yeah. What is it? Did you either question the result or you didn't? Yeah, I, I definitely did, yes. Really, she's the polygraph operator? I tried. <laughs> Man, I, I'm, it took me a lot to even walk out of it. I mean, I know a lot of the stuff sounds crazy. Like I'm, when I, I don't just make things up. Like I really do believe these things, and like, it, it sucks. Well, I, I know you, you believe it, but I'm, as you look at it in the cold light of day, under the bright oh, lights yeah, yeah, in yeah, here, yeah. I mean, does it does it look like that might be a little bit of a stretch? It, it, it does, and, th and those are days whenever I like, I'll be like, listen, like, I, I don't think you've done anything, and I'll, I'll be nice to her. And then once my head, once I start 
looking at anything as again, or if something happens, like it just is right back to square one. Okay, and, and, and you thought it was, you, you thought she's had a, a, a she's, she's been involved with her ex. You thought it's been some random person. No, nah, not, not, not anyone random, just my ex, her ex, and then one of my friends. Well, no, you've He's said disgusting. then maybe just some random person. No, I didn't say that. Wait, you think I sleep with half the town? Like you've but it, it was always that one person. And I know, but you've friend. said that. That's that just, that just me being pissed. Like what? Just, when I said half the town, like that just me being. Well, that's kind of random. It, um, it is. My, when I when I get mad, I say things that I shouldn't say. I have no filter. Well, but then and you I'd can't like say you didn't say them later. Yeah, you're right. I know. <laughs> Wait for this. Well, no, I'm just trying to find the bottom here. No, and I, and I appreciate that. I, you're the only person that can help me. I, that's why I wanted to come on here. Let me tell you, this this has got to stop, or trust me, you're going to wind up in jail, and you're going to wind up losing your children here. You you can't do this kind of erratic behavior and be around your children. And you can't continue to subject yourself to this because rational people are going to step in and say, this is America. I guess you have the right to subject yourself to whatever behavior you want to subject yourself to. But you now have a fiduciary duty to children. And if, and if you're subjecting yourself to abusive behavior and putting your children in harm's way, you may not stand up for yourself, but if you don't stand up for your children, they'll find someone who does. I, I just, I just want to say, whenever she made the comment that I've looked at my son and said that his mom's a whore, I've never, and that's one of my fears is that she has somewhere around. But he's everything to me. I never had a dad growing up, and I, I make well, sure. Well, the I one I'm son. concerned being around the children is you. If I ever raise my voice in front of him, I always used to yell at you for that because I didn't want to hear the screaming. I, I, would, I would do the questioning, and I would, you know, say yeah. things. You have, have you said to your son, I know, honey, your mommy's a whore? I, I've never looked at my son and said Matt, that. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. I said it to you. I, I said that to you. I said that to your mom, too. Eileen isn't the only person who says Matt's behavior is out of control and pushing Eileen away. You won't believe who's taking Eileen's side when we come back. Matt is very verbally abusive towards Eileen. I do call him out on it. As a mom, it hurts when I see you say the horrible things to her. That's She's the mother of your child. Hard. You shouldn't it's talk to her hard. like that. Growing up, my dad never kept his word. And he always put anyone and everybody in front of me. And it made it hard to trust people. Yeah, I just feel like everyone that I love leaves because I'm not good enough. From belittling her appearance to making her send pictures to prove where she is and accusing her of having another man's bodily fluids on her pants, Eileen says her boyfriend Matt's behavior is out of control. But Eileen isn't the only one who thinks Matt is just really out of order here. His mother does too. You did the lie detector test, and that proved that she didn't cheat on you. Why can't you believe that? I really started seeing the trust issues with Matt when he started dating Eileen. If I am right on the dates, there really is no way she has got pregnant with my kid. There's absolutely no way. I believe this child is his. I can't just say, yes, she cheated on you because you feel that she cheated on you. I need proof. I can't imagine Eileen ever cheating on him. Matt is very verbally abusive towards Eileen. I do call him out on it. As a mom, it hurts when I see you say the horrible things to her. That's She's the mother of your child. Hard. You shouldn't it's talk to her hard. like that. Matthew thinks that I cover for her. The trust issues Matt has from his past are real. The ones he has with Eileen are imagined. Until he gets help, nothing's going to change. Okay, I'm, I'm glad you're here. You're here because you want to see your son get some help, right? Yes. What do you want for him? I just want to see him in the ball game. <laughs> Feel better about himself. He doesn't trust anybody. 
he lets very few people in. And I just want him to love himself up enough to know that other people do love him, but he can't trust people just because a select few people let him down. Like, I love him, and I'm not taking her side. I just, I am not in agreement with how he talks to her, and if they're not going to get along, and they're going to fight like they do, and he's going to say the horrible things to her that he says, they should just end it and... Okay, but this is not, this is not just about Eileen, right? No. And you recognize that too, correct? You, you don't just have these suspicions and distrust about her. That's, no. Right? No. Like you have suspicions and distrust about people at work, about your job, right? And about other folks, true. It's true. It's like everybody's against him. And why, why do you think that is? What do you think's going on? I just say I used to always think the worst in everybody. And when, when I think those things, I mean, in my life it's been, it's really been what's going on. I got to always think the worst in my dad. And I would think, like, oh, no one could do that to somebody, but it would come out that he would be doing that. I kind of just carried that to everybody else. I just feel like if someone that close to me did that to me, then why, why wouldn't someone I've known for a year and have to do that to me? Why do you not trust your dad? Uh, he's... He just, I mean, he, he and his wife just split after um, he pretty much took her family and took care of her kids and forever, I mean, my brother. We finally had him for like a month or two and he met some other, a mother lady and within the two weeks she was more important than us. Someone he's known for two weeks was all of a sudden greater than us and we weren't good enough anymore and I haven't talked to him in three months. In the last seven, eight years, I can't even tell you one thing that we've done like on, on his time, like, like willingly. I just feel if I'm lucky enough for him, then. I mean. So you've loved your dad and looked up to him, and he lets you down. Yeah. And every time you give him another chance, and you think, okay, this time, then he lets you down again. And how many times has he said he's going to show up and do something? Made a promise. My whole life. And not kept it. My whole life. Do you think that might cause you to see the world as a hurtful place? I don't think so. I think a lot has to do with him. Do you think that might cause you to say, you can't trust your own father, you can't trust anybody? Yeah. Do you think that might cause you at some level to say, what's wrong with me? I yeah, mean, if I yeah. was a better son, I would inspire more love from my dad. If I was a better person, then people would love me. Obviously, I'm not, so why could I expect anybody else to want me? I mean, is it just possible that that voice starts going in your head saying, nobody is going to be loyal to you. Nobody's going to be truthful to you. Nobody's going to be there for you. Yeah, I mean, why so. would they? I mean, I mean, seriously, if your own dad doesn't want you, what, uh, what? Your, your own dad's supposed to love you, and if your dad doesn't, then why would anybody else, right? That's how I feel. He calls you despicable names. He threatens you, he intimidates you. He does everything he can to try to drive you away. You said you get a high when you fight. Yeah. You ever wonder why? Somehow, some way, you wind up with a, a, a beautiful, intelligent young woman that for some reason winds up in love with you, wants to have your children, wants to share your life, you have to assume she's going to leave you, right? I mean, how could she not? I mean, isn't that the voice in your head? I mean, how could she not? Yeah. 
He's actually said that. You know, Matt, Eileen accuses you uh, of being controlling and jealous. And here are some of the things she says you've done in the past. She's made you send pics to prove where and who she's with. You thought white stain on her pants was another man's bodily fluid, accused Eileen of sleeping with a polygraph examiner or doing something with him to pass the test, sent her audio of having sex with another woman to get back at her, saw a Nike sock on a bed in a photo and thought it belonged to another guy, threatened to take their son and leave her homeless, made her tell the family not to speak Spanish because they thought they were always talking about you, accused Eileen of sneaking out and cheating with a best friend during the nights, threatened to leave and never speak to her if she took a job that your uncle offered. But, you know, you, you say all of this stuff, and I'm going to tell you, all of this is a test. All of this is a test. This is a constant push, push, push on her of a test. About, about half of that's true, though. I mean, yeah, half uh, of it's uh, true. Uh, yes. You know, you can say half of it's true. She says half of it's true. Right. I, I don't, I'm not worried about words. I'm worried about the fact that you constantly test her and push her yeah, to I see do. if she will leave you. I, I do. And I'll tell I, you what all of that adds up to to me is this. Yeah. It all adds up to one thing, I fear you will leave me. Is that not what it's all about? I mean, if you're going to be honest, if you're going to just man up and be honest, is that not what all that adds up to? I think so, yeah. You said you get a high when you fight. Didn't you? Yeah. Do you ever wonder why? Just the, the feeling that I could do whatever I want and she won't leave. Like I'm so used to people leaving, even when I treat them good. That it kind of, kind of feels good that you know, she'd stay with me no matter what. I just kind of got used to... You, you, you are so right. It, 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 is, it is so a test. You're, you're being tested every time. He's seeing if he can push you away. He calls you despicable names. He says things to you. He threatens you. He intimidates you. He does everything he can to try to drive you away, to test you. And every time that you hang in there, for just that few minutes, you get that sense of relief for just that few minutes, right? Yeah. But then it immediately starts to build again, doesn't it? It's kind of like a drug. It's kind of like a drug That's addict. That's exactly what it is, you, yeah. you get a high. You just build, build, push her, push her, push her, push her, push her. And then she passes a test. <sighs> and you get that sense of relief for just a second. She didn't leave me. Can I, can I clarify like just a few of those things on the screen? No, because yeah. I don't care. I, but it's just, it just I, doesn't matter. That, wait, don't get OCD with it. me. It doesn't matter. No, no, it no, doesn't just, matter. Do you really think it matters? Yeah, the people that watch it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Take a break. When you're living in a situation like the one Eileen is, people often feel like they're the only one and that there's no way out. Well, you're not the only one. There is a way out. And I'm going to talk to this couple about what needs to happen here to change this. We'll be right back. My boyfriend, Matt, wants to break my family up because he thought I was lying to him. He thinks that I'm not a good mom. He said I belonged on the streets, and I was gonna be homeless, and that he was gonna take my son from me. Oh my God. 20 year old Eileen says that her relationship with Matt is being destroyed by his controlling and jealous ways. They have a one year old son together and another one on the way. But she's terrified to leave him for good because he threatens to take their son and leave her homeless. Robin, I, I want to ask you to weigh in on this really quick. 
Matt, she's my wife. She's also one of the leading domestic violence advocates in America. She has a foundation, When Georgia Smiled, and which is devoted to the prevention of domestic violence. And she has something called the Aspire Initiative, uh, which is an interactive curriculum to help tweens, teens, and adults uh, learn about and deal with domestic violence. And it's used in schools all over the country. It's been recognized uh, for Congress, United Nations. This is used everywhere. And one of your points is it's not just physical violence, right? That's right. Uh, a lot of people think that uh, domestic violence is if someone hits, kicks, punches you. And what we're seeing here today is verbal and mental abuse. And it, it really, like you saw before the show, when you even had to whisper in my ear some of the horrible things, Eileen, that he is saying to you, that's verbal abuse. You are in an abusive relationship. And, you know, I, I've been sitting here during the show, and my instinct as a woman is to just run up there and grab you and just take you out of here as fast as I can, just run out the back door and just hide you and keep you from him. Of course, I can't do that. Um, I want to. Uh, but what we're here to do today is to educate you and to tell you that you are being abused. You do not have to be talked to this way and treated this way. You can demand that he treat you with dignity and respect. You can demand that he treat you in an honorable way. And you can demand of yourself that you will not accept that of him. You have the right to tell him, you will treat me with respect. You will honor me. And you can make that demand of yourself. You can tell him, I am going to honor myself. I am going to treat myself with, with respect. I am going to treat myself with dignity. And I am going, going to give myself the right to walk away. But what do you think about what she's saying? It's ridiculous. I, I break up with her all the time. And I've, I've, nev I've, never, I've never told her that I'm going to take, take the kid. What, what was uh, it that my wife just said? That was ridiculous. No, 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 no. I, I thought she meant with her. No, your your wife is. She's always spot on. I thought. No, I thought. I thought she meant with her. I'm okay. still stuck on what came up on the screen. No, just, okay, uh, listen. I, I'm, I'm still stuck on the screen. I okay, just, let me stuck. tell you why I'm not going to enter your OCD loop here uh -huh. about what's stuck on the screen. Okay. I, I I'm not going to go play this game with you and argue the ridiculousness of the wording on the screen. Yeah. Let me ask you something. Are you abusive with, are, are you abusive with Eileen? Yeah, Ver verbally I, I say very hurtful things to her. Okay. Yeah. Are you abusive with Eileen? Yes. Do you threaten her? Can you elaborate on that? I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> as in my like. Do I look like I want to play semantics with you? No, no, you don't. Just... Are you, do, do you, do you try to manage her by intimidation? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about when I say threaten her. So you, you verbally abuse her, you derogate her, you erode her self-esteem, do you not? Now, yeah. you and I both know what's in these text messages that are too disgusting oh, yeah. to read. No, I, I know and what I, I say I'm happy to read ridiculous. them. If you, if you want me to read them for all these people, you I, want to talk about the wording on this screen? You want to go over some of the other wording? No, I, no, I, I don't think I you do. I completely agree with you. I just don't want people to think that she's stuck in this relationship. Like I, I've broken up there many times, and she's You don't need to worry about back. what people think. You need to yeah, worry no. about what you I don't, think. I don't trap her in this relationship. That's, that's all I want to get across. Okay, you got that across. You don't trap her in this relationship. Yeah. Everybody got that? <laughs> Everybody got that? He does not trap her in this relationship. I think you are damaged. And I think it's time that somebody tried to heal the hurt instead of judge the angry language. So here's the deal. My point is, I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I think you are damaged. And I think it's time that somebody look past all of your bravado and all of your bad acts and language and tried to heal the hurt 
instead of judge the angry language. So. And that's what I want to do. Even if you're right, if everything you believe is true, if everything you think she's done is true, even if you're right, you're totally wrong. If she has cheated on you, your behavior is totally wrong. If she has cheated on you, the thing for you to do is to either work through that or choose to move on. But what you're doing is at the expense of your character and your integrity. Did they tell you about the, the baby, the conception date and all that? I mean, that's what makes me, that's like the main, like I know if I had no proof, I'd, I mean, even, even if I thought enough that I had proof, I should, I should have left a long time ago, but Matt, the main thing is the, the Matt, baby thing. Stop talking. Hi. <laughs> Sir. Stop talking. That baby is yours. Okay. And I could prove that to you with a paternity test, but then I would be entering your delusional system, and I won't do that. Uh, see this guy right here? This is Miles uh, Adcox right here. Uh, he's CEO of an organization called OnSight. And um, OnSight is, he, he is, they're just a leader um, in trauma treatment. And these guys have uh, a, a beautiful ranch just, side, just outside of Nashville, Tennessee. It's a chance for you to be selfish with yourself and really get your ducks in a row and come out with a fresh and new perspective. And uh, so I asked Miles to be here today to sit down with you after the show and just talk to you about all of this. And, and I, I want you to sit down because Miles, I think you guys could have a wonderful exchange with him. Do you agree with that? I totally agree. I mean, exactly. You're, and Dr. Phil is, is spot on. You're trying to, and this is, unfortunately, it's a familiar mess that we see a lot, but you're trying to, to live and love and parent standing in the middle of emotional quicksand. And Dr. Phil's throwing you a rope here, and if he's going to hand me the other side, I'll pull you to safety, but changing the outcome for your kids and, and for this family here starts with you. So we Thank can you. help you get there. Thank you. And I'll let you guys sit down and, and talk back there, but this is a beautiful place, and I mean that both physically and with the team there that will really work with you, and this, this can change for you in a very short period of time. I think you'll be absolutely amazed. Uh, we're going to talk more about what needs to happen with this family and with this baby on the way when we come back.